Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be unboxing this Tokyo Marui Scorpion Mod M, the little SMG of my dreams. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting and subscribing because that interaction helps me get seen by the YouTube algorithms helping the channel to grow. I have enabled channel memberships. There's a button down here to join. If you did want to do it, it's just 99 pence a month. Totally optional. If you do, massively appreciate it. If not, it's totally fine. Uh, but do consider liking and subscribing. So we've got the Tokyo Marui Scorpion Mod D then. Uh, I've I did like the Scorpions before, but this Mod D just offered something a little bit um, more special for me, a little bit different, and, and something I'm quite excited about. So we'll uh, sort of get into it, and you know, I've got a, a thing for sort of like the tan with some black accessories, I just think it'll look awesome. Uh, so the Tokyo Marui boxing then is always pretty nice boxing, isn't it? You know, you, you feel like you're buying something quality. It's not exactly the... Uh, the cheapest of brands, obviously, uh, but for sort of good reason, really, because their reliability is is well documented. Uh, so under the lid, then, we've got an operator's manual, a little bit of safety. We'll just have a quick look in there. Tear the bag. So some Japanese safety information. Oh, I was loads in here. Um, a magazine subscription, I think some safety information, the battery charging info, um, about using high quality BBs and some targets, and then the manual itself in English and Japanese, just talking you through the actual usage of it and how everything uh, sort of works and goes together. Hop unit, folding the stock and everything. Pretty nice manual, I'll be honest. Even removing and adjusting the uh, side rails and stuff like that, mounting a torch on there various accessories pretty detailed manual really as far as things go and your um detailed sort of blow up diagram of how to take it apart so get that out of the way there she is oh my god what a gorgeous piece so in the box then we've got three little ooh, random bb uh, we've got three m lock um panels or sections to go onto the Obviously, M lock sections on there. We've got our uh, high cap mag, which is 260 rounds. We've got a little box which has got an adapter in it, the EX adapter that allows you to put uh, the micro lipos in it that are for the AEPs and stuff, as well as the AEP um, 7.2 volt uh, NIM batteries in there as well. We've also got an end cap as well that wasn't fitted and a little allen key or hex key for doing the m-lock sections and a little bag, bag of tokyo marui uh, bbs so i'll put that in there for now and then last but not least the absolute beauty there is cleaning rod underneath the actual mod d itself so i'm going to just take the tag off that tells us get that out of the way now my first impression is that is pretty light but feels so comfortable to hold i just absolutely love it um all the weight is in the pistol grip the, you know this back section is where the gearbox is so all of your weight is quite nicely put onto your wrist so it's quite nice to get onto your shoulder um it feels really nice quality it is all polymer which i'll go through in a minute uh, but it's tokyo marui you're definitely looking at you know a quality well-built product um, from that point of view so starting at the front then, we've got our muzzle brake, which is on a normal 14mm negative thread and is fully reversible if you want to, to have it on that way. Uh, but removed, gives us a 14mm negative thread to mount whatever we want, accessories wise on there. Got our handguard then with M lock, two M lock sections, a rail on top, rail underneath for accessories. We've then got our charging handle which can be ambidextrous which exposes the hop unit uh, in there which we'll cover in a moment We've got a mag release to release the magazine which just goes straight up which is a little bit misleading because with it being angled you feel like it should go in but it is just a, a virtually a, a vertical install 
You then got your metal stylized trigger, which is a different style trigger to the normal uh, VZ61 Scorpions. Your selector, which requires a nice sort of firm pull, goes in place easily, you know, nicely and feels like it's secure in that place until you, you want to move it again. We've then got our pistol grip with a battery compartment at the bottom. We just twist the little handle and the plate, plate comes off. The battery slide in, which we'll discuss shortly, uh, and then is ejected with this little lever. Put that back down. So you put it in at the front, twist it and it locks down. We've then got a rear um, rail to mount an optic mostly. Uh, and then we've got our folding stock, which we just pull up on the stock and it folds around to the side. Now it clips in, needs a little bit of pressure just to clip it in, but it is pretty secure on there. Now, what I do like about this is that this then becomes a little extra vert grip. So if you are in CQB settings, a very tight sort of close quarter bar battles, you can quite easily then just flip this and it makes it about approximately 35 centimeters long from about 57. So, you know, it's really making it pretty damn small and you can get into some nice small spaces holding like that. It's surprisingly, that's quite comfortable. A little bit odd that your hand comes across and under so far for a vert grip, but that is pretty comfortable to get it like that. To release it, we just have a little button here, click, locks back into place, and that is solid. Um, there's very little play in that at all. So in terms of creaking then, I'll remove the magazine. There's the tiniest bit of movement, maybe a mill movement that I can feel in the handguard, but it's absolutely solid. There's no creaking anywhere. There's no movement. There's no loose fittings. Again, it's Tokyo Marui. You know, the money that you're paying for these, you would hope for something that's absolutely rock solid and well built. So I'm, I'm really impressed with this. So these weigh in at about 1.3 kilograms in weight, which I'll be honest, is a really nice, comfortable weight. Uh, run all day, probably play all weekend with just this, with how light it is. Um, I just realised the actual lower receiver is actually metal. I didn't even realise that, but the actual, it just sort of dawned on me then that it's actually cold, the bottom half of the, the upper is quite warm. It is quite a warm day. Uh, the upper is plastic. The lower is actually metal, which is absolutely awesome that they've actually put metal lowers on these. Uh, it just adds to the durability and the, the sort of sturdiness of it really as a system. Um, so we've got a metal muzzle brake, we've got a metal outer barrel, which uh, can be removed. They can be, I think they can both be unscrewed uh, and replaced um, with aftermarket, obviously, accessories and, and parts. Uh, we've got a uh, 182 millimeter uh, barrel in there. I can't, I couldn't find the specific bore, but I seem to think it's either 6.05 or 6.08 uh, that Marui use. Um, and we'll have a look at the performance in a minute to see what that's kind of shooting at. I am planning on getting a 6.01 uh, for this um, in the future and, and doing a video out of that as well. Um, so the, the majority then after that is plastic. Your upper receiver is plastic or polymer. Um, your pistol grip's polymer. The lower frame is actually metal. Your select, uh, your mag release is a metal button. The selector um, as well as metal, as well as the stock bracket as well for the side folding stock uh, and your button on your stock as well. The stock itself is actually polymer, um, but it's, like I said, you know, it's a really nice weight into it, really nice weight into it in all honesty. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and have a look at the performance of it, what it's doing in terms of rates of fire and things like that. What I have got for these tests uh, then is I've got um, I couldn't get hold of a Tokyo Marui NIM type uh, battery for this correct one, but I've got a JG one, which I found it pretty damn close in all honesty, just to test it. So it's 7.2 volt NIM battery. I've then also got um, three 7.4 volt AP LiPo batteries that will go in the little adapter. So they just go into the adapter and into the pistol grip. So we're gonna have a look and see if there's any difference in rate of fire between these three batteries. Uh, again, compared back to this as well. So I'll see you in a second.
7.4 I power lipo. Seven point four VP racing lipo. Bottom cover one corner. Ooh. About eighteen rounds a second. The uh, new pro seven point four. Seventeen and a half to eighteen. Okay, welcome back. So we've done the uh, range tip then. Um, online I've seen it sort of quoting that it's accurate to about 25 metres. I was definitely hitting out to 40 metres. Now, I know my range shoot, range test is, is not ideal, but I do know that from where I stand and shoot, um, it's lined up and it's measured perfectly that it is 40 metres to the sort of the big tree that you can see down range. And it was definitely hitting that 40 metres. Not convinced it's going to be highly accurate at that. Definitely accurate, I would have thought, at sort of the 30, 35. But at 40, possibly a little bit spread. But we can look at that in, in future uh, videos. So in terms of the chrono then, um, we were doing at about 258 uh, FPS to 263, which were, I would expect once the hop set, you've, I've fed a few thousand rounds, so it probably settled down to about the 260 FPS point. Uh, again, it's Marui, but you know that's still only a five FPS variance. That's relatively small from my mindset, um, but perfectly sort of suitable FPS, especially for CQB. You're not going to hurt anybody at that kind of FPS, but it's definitely going to go where you want it to go. <coughs> In terms of rates of fire, then, so the seven point two volt. I did expect this to perform worse than the lipos just because of the nature of it. Um, so this put out about 12 and a half rounds per second. Um, not terrible, but this will not last you a day, particularly if you're going to be doing it full auto and things like that. It's going to feel underpowered and, and we'll have a look at sort of the, the feel of the trigger really in, in a minute. So about 12 and a half rounds per second. We then went to the eye power then. So the eye power uh, was giving us about 16 um, 0.7 just above 16 and a half rounds to 17 rounds per second so we've caned about five rounds per second there um, just for, for changing to a lipo I was pretty happy with that we then went to the VP power and we had an even bigger jump we went uh, over 18 to 18 and a half rounds per second on the um, VP racing battery I was really really happy with that potentially going to buy a few more of those and then the last one we tried was the new Prol one, uh, and that gave us 16.8 to 17.8 rounds per second. So very, very similar sort of um, rates of fire between the three uh, little lipos. Um, in future, I have in future I have got an external battery um, adapter that I'm going to fit in there, and we can look at doing some proper 7.4s. Not sure if I want to risk the gearbox on an 11.1, but something to consider. Uh, I'm just waiting for a, a sort of temporary stock plate that I can modify to let the, the cables come out. But we'll do something else on that. Um, so the performance then, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, it's a sort of um, even 18 rounds per second. We're looking at what some of the SEMA stuff does out of the box on an 11.1. So it's a pretty nice rate of fire to be fair. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Obviously it is a tiny tiny little gearbox and a tiny little spring uh, but obviously Marui are known for getting good performance out of low fps so I, I am thoroughly thoroughly happy with that so in terms of the trigger then uh, obviously i made sure that this was all clear so the battery and the trigger then so we just twist the base plate and if you notice on the end here there's generally an arrow uh, and the the end of the battery is shaped in an arrow and that always points towards the front of the gun in this so you just Push it in, I've made sure it's in, 
Uh, and at this point then, we're just going to acknowledge that that battery does absolutely nothing. Wow, okay. So that battery doesn't actually work. So let's try the uh, iPower. We'll go for the iPower then. Let's see if I can bring it back to life. Just to confirm, you don't need the base plate on to get it to work, but the battery will come out if, obviously, shake itself out if there isn't a base plate on there, just to confirm. So let's try that again. Now, pulling it, it's quite, it's quite snappy, and it definitely felt better than when the 7.2 was in there. Uh, when, you ca when you are on safe, the trigger is still spongy. There's still a, a pull there, but it definitely feels really snap it on that so i'm going to change it out to the new pro which is sort of like a, a, an improvement i suppose over the uh, the eye power point that forward so this one doesn't feel quite as satisfying as the eye power in all honesty on that one although it gave slightly better results in terms of rate of fire i don't feel like that's quite as snappy for some reason on single shot as the eye power was and then we'll go for the vp1 uh, as well um, just as a point to these generally either these little batteries have an arrow on the front or they have a red marking they will only go into this adapter one way so the red should be going in front so there's the red and it goes in like that it won't actually go in the other way around because it, it won't accept it so it, if it doesn't go in the way you're trying it's probably because it's going in the wrong way so on this one i know going in like that there we go and then the arrow itself on the bigger adapter drops in there so now that's even more satisfying it's much crisper i feel like it you know touch it and it's sort of completed completed a shot quickest let's see if i can get this one to work again it's not even like sort of wanting to have it. The, the batteries are not the best quality. In all honesty, if you're gonna get something like that, then I genuinely think those are just pretty much a waste of time and effort in all honesty. And, and these LiPos are sort of what you need to get. Especially considering one of these adapters comes in the box as well. It just makes so much more sense to do that. So handling then, and uh, we'll do gloves in a second. And in terms of handling then, the gun itself is nice and comfortable to get into your shoulder. It's nice to get up and aim. Um, you know, accessing the charging handle and the hot then is quite easy. Although it doesn't lock open, it's quite easy to keep it open. The handles are quite easy and not much force. And then the hop just rotates clockwise to apply hop. You know, that's quite easy to handle. In terms of the mag itself then, going in, takes a little bit to get used to that you're basically doing a vertical insert with a slightly angled mag uh, but comes out easily goes in easily it's quite uh, you know you're not going to struggle sort of mid firefight to get that mag in and out um, it is compatible with all of the vz61 uh, um, aep cmg if, if you like uh, type of mag so the mid caps of the original vz61 uh, those will work in it uh, as well as the TM drum. As well as the TM drum, which goes in there like that. I quite like that actually. Um, again, works really nicely. Uh, the chrono in uh, and rate of fire was done with this and the drum as well to test them both to make sure they work all right. In terms of the selector, nice and firm, goes into place well. Uh, you know, really happy with that. The stock stays in place really, really well in both locations and obviously makes it quite comfortable for doubling up into tight little compact spacers. Release that and click it back round again. So we'll have a look at the gloved operation. The only thing I think I'm going to struggle with is possibly the filling of the mag, but we'll have a look. So, get my gloves on. We'll have a look at the gloved operation. This has been one of those uh, sort of guns for me that I don't like to put down. I like to just sit and hold it a lot. Um, so charging handle, easy. We were, I'm not sure. Now I can access and turn the hop, but I can't tell you how much I'm, I can't feel how much I'm turning it. 
So that's potentially an issue and, and could cause issues. Um, in terms of the stock then, I can definitely operate the stock absolutely fine. Now the iron sights that are built in, I sort of didn't cover this. They are, get down there, look, sort of built into the very front and the very rear of these two uh, Riz rails. So in terms of iron sights, they're not amazing. They're not, uh, they're not the, the best to get down. They're not the best to look down. Um, you're probably going to want a red dot on this anyway or something to help with aiming. But then typically I would have thought these would be more of a CQB sort of setting. But anyway, I digress. The mag, the mag goes in easy enough. The selector, easy enough. I'm going to do it. Yeah, that's easy enough to do. The battery cover then, I can twist and get that out. I can definitely access the battery and put a new one in. Can I put the battery cover back on? I can pretty much fully operate this so far. The only thing then, even that's easy as well. Uh, just flipping the hatch open to pour the BBs in and then the winder underneath is more than easy to use as part of it as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. Final thoughts then. Um, they are about 240-ish pounds in the UK. Um, it is a Tokyo Marui, so you are paying for the fact that it's a Tokyo Marui. Now, I know if I don't tinker with this internally, it's probably going to run forever and it's probably going to shoot great. Maybe a little bit of a spread right at the end of its flight path, but it, you know it's a TM. It's going to literally, it'll probably outlast me and probably outlive me uh, more than likely um, <clears throat> because TMs are generally so well built. Um, it's very, very light. In terms of range and accuracy, you're possibly going to be let down a little bit in woodland. But if you're working on your field craft, sneaking about a little bit, then this could be the perfect little sort of sidearm if you are um, a sniper and you just want something um, quick and light to just whip up a full auto about at people. Um, obviously, if you are playing CQB and you want something different to all the typical 9mm based um, SMG sort of things, this could be the thing for you, particularly on those 7.4s, nice and snappy. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I would like there to be this style of mid cap for it. You know, having these in sort of 100 round mid caps would be absolutely excellent. Or even like the Mac 10, uh, TM Mac 10 has the 68 rounders. Even that was that was cool. Um, so I do feel a little bit like let down with it, with just high caps as an option. But then when you're as trigger happy as I am, it's probably a good thing. Um, obviously, I've supplemented that with a 370 round Tokimuri drum mag, which fit and feed absolutely perfect, intended for uh, the Scorpion itself. Um, for that same kind of money, you can get a lot more, I suppose. You know, you, SEMA do a lot of stuff around that price range. A lot of other brands do. Um, if you're going to go for this, you're probably going for this because you like this particular style. There's something about this that has caught your attention. Now, for me, this is, I've just completely fallen for it. I absolutely love the look of it. So I'm dead, dead chuffed to bits with it. Um, and I'm not disappointed at all. Obviously, this is much more expensive than the sort of the well um, AP MP7s and, and the Scorpions and the JG as well. Um, but obviously, you're paying for, I suppose, the, the quality, the, the the name, I suppose, to an extent. The JGs I've found have always worked well. Um, you know, if you're going to buy this, it's purely because you want this, because of how it looks. Um, you know, there's some tweaks to be made in terms of performance. I don't know, a couple of companies uh, are making internal upgrade parts for this as well. You know, I can't op openly, honestly, say this is worth it unless you want this specific model with the, the M-Lock, with the, the stock type and things like that. Otherwise, you know, sort of money-wise, you're probably better off buying a couple of the JGs or um, the wells I've found are not, not that great, not not that amazing, but make good spares and repairs setups. Um, but to my eye, to my mind, because I wanted this specific model, it's totally worth it. Absolutely, totally worth it. So I hope that's been helpful for you guys today. Uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe. I will leave the usual photos straight after this and I will see you next time. Bye.